right so 1861 act is more important so if you ask me if there is anything which is important for exam not only for exam but even for the contribution towards present day constitution it is 1861 act 1861 act and 1919 act these are the two acts which had a major influence on making of indian constitution so if you take this 1861 act this act has increased the strength of central legislature right so the strength of central legislative council got increased not only central legislative council but even provincial legislative council right the central legislative council strength got increased from 6 to 8 that is two more members were added to these councils right two more members were added to the council and coming to provincial legislative council even the strength of provincial legislative council was increased to 12 right so this is the increase in the numerical strength of legislative council right now one should get one should get doubt about provincial legislative councils right so do really provinces have councils when they were uh, abolished in 1833 we all know that by 1833 act bombay and madras were uh, deprived of legislative powers that means they had no law making power now we are talking about provincial legislative councils really do these provinces have legislatures now this is the question that should come into our mind so do they really had these councils the answer is yes all right so 1861 act is known for restoration it is known for restoration of legislative powers of uh, these provinces so every province had its own legislative council every province had its own legislative council right and these province they are formally headed by governors so there is the institution of governor and there is legislative council as well as executive councils even at provincial level so for provinces there is legislative council and executive council both are placed under the control of governors all right so at center we had viceroy and viceroy's executive council and legislative council whereas in provinces we have governor with legislative council and executive council all right so this is what the system all right so the strength of these councils were increased not only this all right so not only the restoration of legislative functions were uh, uh, not only this restoration of legislative functions got uh, started in 1861 it is also known for right uh, officially recognizing portfolio system right so a portfolio system which was uh, which was actually got started in this portfolio system it was actually started in 1859 by lord canning right and this portfolio system it is officially recognized by law through 1861 act a statutory recognition is given to portfolio system so what is portfolio system what do you mean by portfolio system what do you understand by portfolio system even now we see this word in in the regular news Amma? that is for the portfolio investment is different right it comes under fias right what do you mean by portfolios assigning position. assigning position assigning work so portfolios represent division of work of government right the work of government is divided into different ministries and departments right it is division of work division of work into different departments and ministries and each ministry each department is assigned to a particular member right so to whom among whom these portfolios are uh, uh, allotted it is to the members of executive council so viceroy's executive council acted as members of uh, that is they acted as ministers 
right so portfolios right uh, portfolios are given to these members of viceroy's executive council the entire work of department the entire work of minister uh, government is divided among the members of members of executive council and it is these members it is these members who acted as ministers right so they are the ministers so though they are not elected but still they are the c right uh, to understand uh, easily we can call them as ministers so we never had any element of elections before uh, independence at central level at central level we never had the element of elections so though 1919 act has introduced the element of elections but it was only at provincial level but not at central level so at center we never had an elected government right so it is the viceroy who acted as the head of the government and below viceroy it is the members of executive council who acted as ministers right so this is what about so this is what about right the uh, portfolio system right so portfolio system it was actually introduced in 1859 by lord canning right then uh, the executive that is the viceroy was empowered to make budget for the first time the concept of budget was introduced in india in uh, by 1861 act so in lakshmikant it is given as 1892 it is wrong right so it is not 1892 it is in 1861 act right so it is 1861 act which has right introduced the element of budget right so uh, normally in public administration it is an important topic in optional of public administration the concept of budget the financial administration is an important topic right so do correct it right it is in 1861 act so where the uh, viceroy viceroy was empowered to make budget for the entire british indian administration so there is no separate budgets for british indian administration and provinces for entire for both provinces and for center it is a common budget so today we have uh, central budget and state budgets every state having its own budget but when this concept of uh, when the system of budget got introduced right it is a common single budget both for center as well as for provinces right so this got uh, separated this got divided only in 1919 right it is divided only in 1919 right so this is about what you call uh, budget and viceroy was also given the powers right viceroy was also given the powers right uh, not only budget powers but even uh, he was given the ordinance making power the veto powers the rule making power right so it is this act which empowered the viceroy to make rules to make rules for the convenient transaction of british indian administration so without rules can we run the government whether administration can be run no so rules are integral part of administration so without rules there won't be any a uh, consistency or uniformity so it will lead to arbitrary administration so rules are essential right to reduce discretion to bring a uniformity in the administration and the power to make rules was actually given to viceroy right so it is viceroy who is allowed who is empowered to make rules for the convenient transaction of british indian, uh, british indian administration he is given the power to issue ordinances ordinance making power he is given the power to make please don't get disturbed uh, there is a person who is just calling off his camera he may from this side just you call like this so no one should get disturbed this continue this one minute will come and go all yeah. minute, okay okay all right so here ordinance making power that is uh, viceroy was given viceroy was given the power to make ordinances so what is an ordinance and when ordinances are issued by uh, viceroy so ordinances are issued ordinances are issued when legislative council is not in session when there is a recess of legislative council when the council is not in session it is only then it is only then the uh, 
viceroy can make ordinances they can issue ordinances so ordinances are nothing but they are the ordinance issued by viceroy has equal powers and equal force as it of law of legislature so ordinances always are similar to laws in fact ordinances are nothing but the law making power the legislative power enjoyed by executive so it is a legislative power it is a legislative power enjoyed by executive right so this is one thing right an order or a law made by a uh, executive which has equal force and equal effect as that of law of legislature right so this is the uh, ground for issuing the ordinance so ordinances are issued only when a uh, legislature is not in session similarly veto powers right so viceroy was given the veto powers now what do you mean by veto powers what do you understand by veto what is veto right veto is nothing but overriding powers right the power to reject right so viceroy executive has every power to reject or override a law made by legislature right so it is not compulsory it is not always important for the viceroy to accept the laws of legislature the opinion of legislature he has every power to reject them outrightly right he can veto them right so these are different powers so he is been right he has the power to allocate business of the government that is portfolio system right he has the power to make rules he has the power to make budget right he he has the power to issue ordinances he has the power to veto each and every power that is given to viceroy they are also present in the present day constitution so whatever whatever powers are given to viceroy as it is li the president of india enjoys all the powers say for example right so if you take budget making power so article 1 to 12 of the constitution article 1 to 12 of the constitution uh, deals with budget making power of president so the budget is introduced budget is made in the name of president of india and budget is introduced only on the prior recommendation of president of india so without the recommendation of president budget is not introduced in the house right so if you take article 77 of the constitution article 77 deals with rule making power of president so under our uh, constitution of india according to article 77 right president of india is allowed empowered to make rules for the convenient transaction of business of india so this was the question asked in uh, maybe in 2017 prelims or 18 prelims uh, uh, question on article 77 right so it is article 75 right where uh, president of india appoints council of ministers and allocation of ministries are done right so appointment of ministries are done by president of india it is to these ministers who are appointed where the allocation is made right this is one element right so <coughs> we have article 123 of the constitution article 123 deals with ordinance making power of president of india so it is according to article 123 president of india can issue ordinance when parliament is not in session when either house of parliament is in se uh, not in session then right uh, president of india can issue ordinance right article 111 of the constitution article 111 of the constitution deals with veto powers or assenting powers of president of india it deals with veto or assenting powers of president of india right so that means right uh, is there any change between viceroy and president of india is there any change in these two institutions no in fact what is given in 1861 they are present in present day constitution right so can we say that 1861 act has influenced the office of president of india yes or no yes take down a question on this area discuss discuss the futures of 1861 act 
discuss the features of 1861 act features of 1861 act and its significance and its significance to the present day constitution its importance in the present day constitution right so here you need to clearly establish a relation how it is present in the present day constitution how it is actually present in the present day constitution so each provision of 1861 act right and at the same time right bring out the corresponding provision of indian constitution say for example if you are saying that uh, 1861 act has introduced portfolio system you need to show that how this portfolio system was introduced in indian constitution by mentioning the relevant article so this makes this shows the comprehensive answer right so 1861 act has an importance 1861 act has an importance in indian constitution right so this is one element right so after 1861 act the another important act is 1909 act 1909 